Hello everyone, today we're going to talk about Skull and Bones, the game that Ubisoft promised more than 10 years ago that pivoted into an MMO, spinned off into other projects due to technology being limited, to arrive today as a game that could have found success 10 years ago. Skull and Bones is a prime example of bad game design, bad business practices and a completely deranged descent of a company that was once a prodigy. Ubisoft has finally launched Skull and Bones into open beta and I got to play around for 2 hours that felt like 20. Mainly because the game feels like it's stuck in a time and place that I thought gaming was done with. The game starts with you aboard a ship on the Indian Ocean and right from the start I got the impression I was playing someone's Unity project done in an afternoon. Visually unimpressive and somehow with worse controls than Sea of Thieves, a similar style of game released 6 years ago and I'm pretty sure with way less development time than Skull and Bones. They managed to make the introduction to the naval combat so boring that you end up circling the same ship, blasting it away for long minutes while your own ship is being blasted by others. But don't worry because it's all scripted and your ship will eventually go down. You are then taken to the character creation screen, another brilliant design decision by Ubisoft Singapore where they have you choose your character by seeing a reflection on a puddle. It's a shame the puddle isn't big enough for me to actually see what body type I'm selecting or the tattoos that should be placed all over the body. So again, a very tested and refined experience for your delight. You are picked up by a couple of crew members that will help you in your journey to reclaim your place as a pirate and my god, they all have the same wooden expressions on their faces and the voice acting is actually embarrassing. While I truly appreciate the different accents, which I love, the delivery of the lines is filled with boredom equaling my own. So first task to get to, get our materials to build a boat. The resource gathering can happen in a few different ways. You can hunt animals on the sea for their resources by throwing a clunky spear at them. I hope you like these melee combats because it's all you're going to get with this game. You steer your ship in the direction of resources and press F to gather them. Riveting. You approach resource pools and play a childish mobile gaming level mechanic to get more resources. You destroy ships or find shipwrecks to steal loot. The basic game loop is to get more reputation by doing quests that make you gather resources, craft things or fight other ships. Overall it wouldn't be a bad thing if each of these tasks weren't so repetitive to do. And your main mission is essentially to impress a big bad pirate so he sees you as a big bad pirate yourself. There's very little stakes to this story from what I played and the quality of the writing is not impressive. They try to make the pirates fun and goofy and then throw around a few swear words to make them look tough. If you asked any 10 year old what a pirate is, he would probably make the same explanation that the narrative team did for this game. It seems devoid of any creativity, any design choice that would make this world feel alive. The whole game can be described with three colors, blue of the water, brown of the wooden buildings, green of the forested islands. That's it. While the characters themselves aren't awful, they don't stand out in any way because the world around them is so utterly boring. There is no color, there is no flashiness. They could have went three ways about this. Cartoony, fun and goofy pirates. Realistic, gritty and scary pirates. Or a combination of both. But they committed to none. If the actual sailing mechanics were fun, I think it could be excused. But they are definitely not. They built the sailing of the game like a sprinting mechanic where if your crewmen are tired, your ship doesn't go fast, even if you have the wind in your favor. The only time the wind actually seems to affect you is if you sail against it, but in a game where positioning your sails isn't even an option and you have to change the whole direction of the boat, 
it just makes the game ashore to get anywhere fast. So you'd think that at least the naval combat would be good, right? Well, it's not. Once you played it for a few minutes, you've seen everything about it. You can ram ships, you can shoot ships, you can board ships without actually boarding them, you just get a cutscene, and you can loot them. I'm not even exaggerating when I say there's nothing else here to talk about, there really isn't. There's not much strategy to position your ship, not much strategy to using different guns. Maybe if you advance a lot in the game this could be present, but after 2 hours it seemed the game didn't have anything else to offer me. Getting bored fast, I decided to check what was possible in terms of ship customization and I think you might imagine where this is going. A game released at $70, which is already $40 too much for what you're getting, they added a lot of microtransactions for the customizations. You get some decent options that you can purchase with the in-game currency, but if you want anything fancy, prepare to shell out more money. And I don't even know why anyone would pay to look fancy on this game, because when I played it, I came across 10 players total, on a 2 hour playtime. Granted, the map is big, so I might have missed a lot of people there, but even on the hub island, where everyone gathers together, it was like an abandoned parking lot of ships with no real owner in sight. I don't think I have a lot more to say about Skull and Bones as a game, to be honest with you. But this video still has some gas, because I want to talk about how Ubisoft is currently a spineless company with weasels in charge of games that they have no business messing with. How can Yves Gilmore, CEO of Ubisoft, come out and defend Skull and Bones, call it a quadruple A game, and saying $70 is a fair price for it. And if you want to play 3 days earlier, prepare to pay $100. What a steal! This game is in many ways similar to an NFT. People will buy into it, thinking they'll have their money's worth, the rug pull happens, where everyone will wonder where the game actually is, Ubisoft shuts down the live service because the few whales still buying are no longer profitable, and they'll do it again with the next game. It's coming to the point that these AAA games, I'm sorry, quadruple A games, should start to get investigated for money laundering, mismanagement of funds, or just for being a plain old scam. Pick one, pick all of the options, I wouldn't be surprised if it was all of them happening at once. You already know the game couldn't die because it got government funding from Singapore, so they had to complete this scam somehow, or they would get in trouble with them. So one can only imagine what other skeletons are in the closet. I honestly don't see who the target audience for this game is. I know we are starved for games with a pirate team, but this game is the equivalent of being hungry, stranded on an island, and call an Uber Eats to deliver you a poop tart. If you don't believe me, that's fine friends, you are still in time to try the open beta for yourselves and make up your mind. But this is one of those games where I wouldn't take more than a couple of hours to know how bad it stinks. Thank you all so much for watching, if you liked the video please leave a comment, it helps me out so much, I hope you have a lovely day and bye bye.